Jay Matadi. I'm here on the Ganga and quite a lot of water today so you probably hear it in the background. Can you hear it? And actually it reminds me of the topic I wanted to come on and speak about which is the drone. And I'm just here in Ganga doing the most beautiful drone. It's this continuous underlying sound that supports your singing or your drumming or maybe even your speaking and it gives it some richness some fullness and it's something you can work in so what is a drone so from the English language I guess we know the word drone to be like something that's fairly constant um, they do define drone to be either a constant tone or something that's repetitive. Could be like a string instrument or one that you're plucking. So you're getting this repetitive um, bass line. And well, I guess drumming is doing that. When we're chanting and drumming together, we're creating the drone with the drum. And that's why we're trying to keep it fairly simple and not a complicated thing and not varying the rhythm too much just with a few ornaments every so often because it provides that platform upon which the chant can really develop first of all it's a rhythmic platform and but it's also this uh, constant sound like a drone and so it gives you something to sing into now if you add in another drone sound like I tried to do on that last video with the harmonium but I got the sound relationships not quite right on the recording a drone should be underlying it shouldn't dominate obviously the singing or the playing and you've got to get that right relationship so when you have a, a drone either you have a, an app Tanpura app and you can tune it to the sa, the tonic bass note of your singing or your drum, then you provide this, this sound platform upon which you can develop your song and your playing on the drum. So that's adding a double drone effect, I would say. And the rhythmic one can develop a little bit more when you have this sonic tonic drone. So the important thing is to keep the relationships correct so that the drone is supporting it but it's not in the foreground, it's a background sound and one that's conducive and it doesn't have to be just a plain sound, in fact that's probably not good. The tambura is playing mostly on the sa and the pa which is the tonic note and the fifth. So you're getting the harmonies, perfect harmonies, and this creates uh, a good variety of overtones. And in fact, on the tampura, they actually have a string down on the bass fret um, bridge, I guess it's called. They have on each string, there's four strings usually, they have like a thread. And if you play with that thread and get it in the right position under the string on this bridge, that you get this sort of vibration and it's that classic vibrational sound that you get with the tanpura and that creates this sort of landscape of overtones or harmonics and that's what allows the Indian vocalist or any vocalist but the one who's trained in ragas um, trying to tap into the correct microtones and the combination of intervals from the, the tonic up to the octave and not every raga has seven notes in the scale some have five some have six some notes are missing sometimes even the fifth is missing which is unusual but there are some ragas with that and all these variations and it's not only the notes of the scale and whether they're um, flat or sharp but also how you sing them together like the sequences and the rhythms and sometimes going up the scale you have a different set of notes is coming down it's quite a complex thing and um, there is a system of music therapy 
which is you know like a modern way of looking at the Indian ragas as a form of music therapy that does exist just as in the Turkish or oriental music with the makams they have developed their own sort of system as how these makams and their tunings create healing and mood enhancement and these ancient traditions they knew how sound affected you and in, in the Indian um, history mythology history there is a, tour, a story of a, a famous musician Tansen who was so adept at creating these effects with the ragas that he could put people to sleep he could make them cry he could make them laugh he could make them excited he could he could do anything possible through the music because he knew how to tap into the human emotion and how to manipulate it and um, that can be a good thing or a bad thing I guess but at least if we're aware of this ourselves we can notice when some music makes us agitated when some music makes us happy or sad or you know it's like tuning in to how the music is affecting our emotions and affecting our mind and our psyche and some of the a lot of the music has sort of uplifting spiritual uh, qualities and they're even given the names of the ragas are usually names of deities or some spiritual names uh, because they invoke a quality which is something that you would use to invoke a particular quality of the divine and in fact in the earlier times all forms of art whether it's music dance poetry any expression it was a sacred art form and it was done for the purpose of bringing that divine quality into our human existence and describing it and expressing it and, and understanding it I guess and, and seeing the way to becoming whole and complete as a human. So this is a very uh, deep subject and I just started with drone but I'm just inviting you to experiment with the drone when you do the uh, frame drum kirtan, when you're drumming, um, when you're chanting, and when you're bringing it all together. And the drone can be really the sounds of water flowing. It can be a tanbura, an Indian instrument that creates these harmonics and sets the drone. Um, it can be the sound of a monochord, which you may know has like 20 or more strings all uh, tuned to the same note and sometimes they also have a, a other strings in there for the perfect fit and that when you play that it's very simple because you're just stroking the strings not doing anything very uh, melodic with it it's creating this drone and it's full of harmonics these overtones so in they say of course in the Indian tradition Om is the sound of the universe and when you chant Om if you can do it in a way where you create through the relationship of the tongue with the throat and the palate and you create a particular relationship there you can create more than one sound it's like you're chanting on the, the drone, the tonic note but through this manipulation with the tongue and, and changing the shape of the cavity in your mouth and throat, the back of your mouth, um, and pushing it up into the, the, the upper cavities in the sinus and in the front of the head, you can create uh, purposely, consciously create these overtones, the octave, the fifth, the third, the second, the Forth, they're all in there and so that's why the sa or the om or this one note this drone all the music is contained within it because all the harmonics are there and if you ever practice um, this overtone singing and start to learn the technique of uh, creating these harmonics you realize how healing these sounds are because they're pure 
sounds. They're really nature's, it's nature's music. It's the sound of these harmonies, the celestial harmonies. And that's why Om is considered to be the source of creation. These harmonies, these relationships of sound, in fact, infinite frequencies in one sound are there. And in fact, in our own voice or in the musical instruments, it's the quality of these overtones that you get when you're just playing one note on a string or you're just singing or you're just speaking even. It's the quality of these overtones and the richness that comes from that that creates your unique vocal signature. Like someone can listen to you on the phone and you don't announce who it is, but they recognize you through your voice. And even as we get older and maybe our voice changes a little bit, there's still something in our voice that identifies us. And there is a sort of like a signature sound in there and it's this combination of frequencies these uh, overtones and undertones and these qualities in our speaking voice or in an instrument that define you have, might have five instruments all playing the one note and they all sound different and we can tell which instrument is which because of this timbre this quality so it's a very rich subject and if you start to go into it you and, and even play with it in your own practice bringing in a drone something that's maybe creating a live drone obviously has more effect when it comes to uh, physically emotionally feeling these overtones uh, but you could sit out a river uh, you can sit where there's birds singing you can have somebody playing a tanpura or or you can just drum and play the tanpura on an app on your phone which is still quite nice to experience and what we're doing when we're drumming and we're chanting I haven't researched this yet and I want to do a bit more but this idea is coming up in me about how you know like chanting on its own is is medicine, it's healing, drumming on its own is healing, it's medicine. But when you bring all this together, it's really intensifying the effect that it's having on the mind because we have our primary awareness and our secondary awareness and maybe other levels of awareness or attention um, in our awareness. So we have our primary attention, our secondary attention. So when you're driving a car, your primary attention is on driving the car. But how many times have you experienced it that you've reached the destination and you can't remember where you were driving? It's like you just got there by magic because your mind, your secondary attention, was on something else. And your primary attention was on autopilot and it just did it. So when you're drumming and chanting, you're doing two things at once, which we know is quite difficult if you're trying impossible if you're trying to do that all in the same primary attention field because you can't really think of two things at the same time you get into a twist so you're having to entrain and practice first of all keep it simple and slow to start with and entrain into that rhythm into the sound into the vibration and let that sort of settle somehow more into your subconscious so that your um, allowing that to go into your second, secondary attention and then your primary attention can be on the thing that you have to think about because you're improvising vocally or you're singing songs with words and you have to sort of like pay attention to what you're doing so what we're doing there is we're occupying the mind at different levels and that healing effect of course is very much taking us out of all this negative chatter and this superfluous mental stuff going on that tends to disturb us and create emotional dis-ease and physical dis-ease. So that's why it becomes medicine and it is a form of yoga and there's probably even other deeper levels of our attention that we can um, tap into to create situation where the mind is just fully embodied in what you're doing and all this other extraneous stuff disappears 
And I'll just finish off to say, for those of you who haven't heard it before, I'm sure many have, the word mantra, mantra, man is mind. So mind is our whole mind field, our mental emotional stuff. And in the Indian philosophy, they talk about the mind being centered in the chitta, which is sort of in this heart space. And so this is where all the mental, emotional colorings are stored in the chitta. So mantra, man, manas, manas is mind. And so it's not just thinking, it's the whole mind. Um, it's a lot more than we think about in, in the Western explanation of what is mind. So the mind has different levels. So, tra means either a vehicle to transport the mind or a means of protecting the mind. Oh, there's some other definitions. But basically, mantra, by keeping your mind focused on a mantra, you are protecting the mind from all this chatter and you're allowing that mind to transcend everyday stuff you know and it's like it's transporting the mind into a higher consciousness so this is what mantra is doing and in a way it doesn't matter what the mantra is but if you're chanting a mantra that has sacred syllables like the Sanskrit language or some other languages that have that same quality um, and it has a sort of spiritual religious context then you're focusing your mind not only on anything but on divine energies and you become filled whatever you focus your mind on you become so if you're focusing your mind on divine sounds that then create in your mind field the form of that divine you actually become that and that's where mantra transports us into another state of consciousness so these are my thoughts for today as I sit here by the Ganga imbuing my consciousness with the color of Ganga Ma, that sound of purity, that sound of divinity, that sound upon which everything flows in life. So I'm going to go into some drumming now. Wish you a beautiful day. Jay Ma.